I don't know you anymore. And again, you're breaking my heart. You're going down a path I can't follow. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. I got my good friend, Doc. He had the week off, so we recorded a couple extra videos this time, so you're going to be getting more Doc than normal. I hope you all are fans. How you doing, Doc? I'm wonderful, sir. Thank you for having me. Man, I thought you, you left there for a second. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, I'm, I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. All right, we're going to talk about five moments that killed comic runs. Uh, these we're, we're going to do two DC, two Marvel, and, and one uh, independent comic book. And there's nothing worse, Doc, than when you're into a comic book run, and things, things are running, firing on all cylinders, and then you get this what-the-hell moment that just comes out of nowhere, and then you just have to exit stage left because you realize the writer or somebody has lost the plot in taking this thing in the wrong direction. Oh, yeah. It's, Obviously, it's... we you see that far too often in especially modern comics, but even long, you know, eighties, nineties, even 2000 books weren't immune from this same problem. Obviously the two examples, everybody talks about Spider-Man since past Spider-Man one more day. We are not going to talk about those because we've talked about them enough on the channel. We just had our uh, ASM 74 video uh, early, or at the end of last week. So we're going to take it a new direction, but we will acknowledge that absolutely those two events killed Killed Amazing Spider-Man for a lot of readers. It did. Now let's get into some DC comics. So you're you're not the biggest DC guy, but you you've read some Batman Superman back in the day. I'm sure you heard about a little th event called the Death of Superman. Yes, I did. So DC's uh, sales on Superman were lagging. They needed something to rejuvenate interest in the character. They did Death of Superman. It was an enormous hit. Yes, it was, it, all, was. it was all the news. It, it brought people back. Of course, they ended up killing Superman. They brought in four uh, four titles spinning out of that. Yeah, uh, the reign of the Superman. Yeah, the four different kind of characters. And people were interested in it. And, you know, eventually, obviously, Superman comes back. I think he has a mullet. But we eventually, we get the real Superman back. And, yeah. you know, feels like things kind of got back to normal and it, and it worked. And then we got Superman Blue. And Red. I don't... I don't, well, red comes a year later. Initially, yeah. it's blue, and he's wearing like a weird suit that has to contain his energy, and it's a, almost a completely different superhero. It is the electric blue Superman. Um, I mean, it was so quintessentially 90s. Um, and, and, and it felt like, yeah, this was another case where like the writers and the editors and everybody was like, okay, well, Death of Superman worked and we got and then Reign of Superman got people reading all the Superman and then the return of Superman got people sticking around. And then we're a couple years later and sales are lagging a little bit. They're not quite where they were around the event time. So let's do something again. What? Can, well, we can't kill him again. So what can we do to fundamentally make him a different change? superhero? Yeah, let's <laughs> fundamentally change. Um, and he gets like these electric powers and he's electric Superman and he's all blue and it, it never made any goddamn sense. Um, it they tried for to. over a year. They brought in Superman red. Like, what? yes. And he was the, 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 the fire Superman. So like, it, like initially, like I, I had dipped out of Superman myself around this time and it got me at least curious a little bit. And I'm like, what the hell is going? Why is there a blue one and a red one? Did And he got split in parts and his, his energy absorption is, is in the red one. And the blue one is the power suit that what the f Oh, is going on here i have no clue how this works they're totally and completely different characters and i, I it did not have the same resonation that they thought that it was going to have with trying to repeat that death of superman and reign of the supermen thing like at all no because you know at least those you know the character was superman superman blue and red it's just something else what the fuck is this yeah, I mean, you had like Reign of the Superman. You had your Superboy, 
okay, he might be the real Superman. Uh, you had Cyborg Superman. Oh, well, he might be the the hey, real Superman. I think everyone damaged. knew he was evil from the beginning. Uh, yeah, but he then, looked pretty damn evil the first time he saw it. And then you had Eradicator, um, mm -hmm. which was like this like kind of techno Superman. And then you had Steel, which mm -hmm. was, you know, although that one you figured out quite quickly was just, you know, it was a it was John Henry Irons inside of a suit and you know, okay, that's definitely not Superman. Uh, but the rest of them theoretically still could have no, it could have been Superman's spirit that had somehow inhabited any of those people, and you didn't know if they were going that way or not. Um, but so it was it was so weird. And of course, you ended up with mullet Superman in the solar suit in that all black solar suit out at the end. So none of them were actually the Superman. Um, but this one was just this one just didn't make any damn sense. It definitely killed uh, any interest that had returned for Superman for, for quite some time. Now let's go over to the indie scene, Doc. I don't know if you heard about this. There is an indie revolution, a bunch of very exciting artists that were driving sales at Marvel Comics up and left essentially the X-Men and Spider-Man offices. They decided to take their ball, take it over there and make up their own new uh, new comic book line called Image Comics. Yes, the Exodus. In theory, this is one of the great moments in comic book history that the show that, you know, you don't have to be at DC and Marvel to do something big. And, you know, this was a game changer and there was so much interest. Whether it be uh, you know with Todd McFarlane, uh, his comics, Extreme, Wildstorm, Top Cow, all of these like the orders were through the roof, Doc. Yeah, and how could this fail? Because um, they couldn't it, meet a goddamn deadline. Extreme, yes, Wildstorm, and Top Cow missed every deadline for a year. Yes, they did. They were like, I mean, there was I think a year and a half between Young Blood number five and number six, like. You know, I, I understood like these guys were starting their own studios, starting their own companies, but like they didn't have the foundation built yet. Like they thought they did and they only needed like four or five issues out there to to really establish themselves because Youngblood did it. Wildcats did it. Stormwatch well, Stormwatch was actually relatively on schedule. Um, Cyberforce did it. Uh, Wetworks just never even came out. Now, granted, Willis had an ex explanation for that. You know, he did have his, you know, his sister's health and everything at the time. So that one was understandable. But there were so many of these books that were, I mean, you had, you know, Wildstorm Extreme and then Top Cow. That was making up like 90% of the total volume of what uh, image was putting out on a monthly basis, you know, spawn or Todd only had spawn, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Eric Larson only had savage dragon. He later had some extra stuff, but they didn't really, they weren't very often either. Um, and then uh, Valentino only had shadow Hawk. So, but all these other, like the other three founders, were putting out eight, 10, 20 books um, in their lines um, and they weren't meeting their deadlines. They just weren't. Um, and it, so by the time, and, and these books, you know, they, the stores would order them and then they'd sit on, like they'd wait. They just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And these books would never show up. And then by the time they actually That's why you needed FOC. <laughs> yes. That by the time they actually showed up, all the interest that had been built for that forgot. was gone. It did. It went away. The interest went away. The people went back to back to Marvel. They went back to DC. They stopped reading comics entirely um, because they felt let down by this you know, revolution that was going on. And it was a revolution that that petered out as a result. I mean, it, it nearly killed image. It nearly killed, it killed local comic shops around the country. This combined this case that's happened right around the same time of, or right before actually the distribution wars happened with Marvel's heroes world debacle. So 
you had all these things in rapid succession. This was the first huge domino to fall that nearly killed the entire comic industry, not just image and not just, you know, that indie revolution. It almost killed comics. Not, not a good thing. Not only did no. that, that kill a comic book run, it almost killed a company. And I believe Rob Liefeld eventually got the old, uh, he hoped. Rob, yeah, Rob, um, you know, regardless of whether or not it's he left or they fired him, I really don't care. They could have that fight forever. It doesn't really matter to me. He le- He's no longer with them at that point. Um, Jim had to eventually, within a few years, sell his company to, uh, to DC. Um, it, it got so bad that um, Mark Silvestri pulled Top Cow out of Image for a period of time and made them their own publisher and get their own distribution deal. Um, you know, yes, yeah, Spawn kept coming out, but even the spawn numbers were, they started tanking too. I mean, they were in the millions at first. And no, obviously that wasn't going to stay there, but he was, you know, 18, 15, 18 issues. And he was banging out a hat, like 200,000, 150,000. Well, every he also issue. stopped being the artist and he started he kind of running through new artists there. For yeah, me. he did. But I mean, who followed him? Greg Capullo, who was mm-hmm. already a Tony known Daniel, commodity. Think, a Tony Daniel. Um, so all these, you know, it's not like they, it was a real big drop off there and the book was still coming out, but it was all the other, everybody else not getting their stuff out in time that, you know, one, one tent pole still being up wasn't enough. The, the tent was collapsed. It was just a TP at that point. Let's get on over to the big two doc. Let's talk about Marvel comics. You're the Marvel aficionado. Captain America's never ever been a like a tier A character. He no. might have had some runs or some story arcs or maybe an event or two that really sold well, but for the most part, you know, he's a he's a B tier, C tier character that you can, yeah. you know, count on, you know, in today's climate, you would expect like 35, 40, maybe 50,000 at most sales on that. But you can't even count on that anymore, Doc, because of a little moment called Hydra Cap when Captain America uh, within the um, the secret secret empire storyline, decided to announce that he had been a Hydra agent the entire time. Uh, not Nick Spencer's m- brightest moment, certainly not the brightest moment in the history of of uh, Captain America. And this character literally has never recovered sales wise. No, Since I mean, I mean, granted, it doesn't help that he ha- they haven't had a a very good writer on it or artist um since this point but um you know jesus saez that was on it wasn't very good a lot of the other writers or artists that have been on there haven't been very good so you know that that definitely it doesn't help Twenty thousand with with uh freaking gosh dang Tony he see coats and, no no the, the cover artists that they always put on stuff oh yeah the uh, alex alex ross covers yes alex ross covers D- diplo twenty thousand. it, it would have been twelve thousand without his covers Probably. Um, now, yeah, as you said, you know, Cap's Cap's been reliable, but never, you know, outstanding. You um, got to have that mid tier that's just sitting there, like your Night Wings, your Green Lantern, yeah. your Flash, to really it's, just keep those numbers and, and be be stable. Captain America's not stable anymore, and it's no, because of that very moment. It, it really is. Um, you know, the same way. You know, there's there's a few of these in there you know every every company does need that that mid card that ic title you know bracket the um you know if in baseball parlance it'd be you know the ground like the base hit hitters um you know those 20 goal guys in hockey you know those those stable um they're never going to make a highlight reel they're not going to make an all-star game but they're going to reliably be able to help you put wins together throughout your, you know, across your, your, your company. Um, and cap's always been that. And I think that Nick Spencer, you know, however much he's redeemed himself on ASM since, um, he prevent, he, he killed the chance of cap being that character anymore. Um, and they have never recovered. They haven't even made an attempt to recover because 
they refused to do the one thing that would have helped them recover, which was to say, oops, we fucked up. And instead they went with, nope, nope, nope. It's definitely the real cap. Yep. It's definitely the real cap and the cap that's running around as actually Captain America now. Nope. That's a, that's a basically a construct made out of a, from a cosmic cube and and somebody's memory. No, no. They need to have their Britney Spears moment. Say, oops, I did it again and walk that shit back. Well, it was, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, the end of the clone saga when they said, no, Peter Parker was actually the clone and Ben Riley was the real Spider-Man the entire time. And, and, and you know what? That's the clone saga is another one that we, we could have probably put on this. Absolutely. List, it was but, initially on the list. I had to remove it. Yeah. And, but this was like Captain America's version of the clone saga. And, and, and it, rather than admitting, making a mistake, they just kept trying to double down to work their way through it. And all they've done is dig the hole deeper. And I think it's going to keep going that way until they reverse course or they accept that he's going to be a D list character from now on that can't even carry an ongoing. That's what it appears to be, but yeah, hail Hydra, Hydra cap, a terrible decision. It definitely killed that comic run and it bobbed about sales to the levels. We didn't know that it could actually drop to. Yeah. Let's head back over to DC comics. Now, you're not as, as big a DC. This one's more recent. I know you read less DC now. Um, but there was a major league revitalization of Batman sales while Scott Snyder was the writer. He introduced a Court of Owls, and you know he, he did a lot of stuff on Batman. People were excited. When they did DC Comics Rebirth, they were bringing in a hot writer. Uh, obviously, it worked over at uh, Marvel, did the Vision series, had done some Dick Grayson work. Uh, Tom King, and, you know, he promised he was going to take Batman in a new direction. And the sales initially for Batman during DC Universe Rebirth were very, very good. And it was clear he was going in a different direction. A lot of people liked it, Doc. Whether you think Tom King's a good writer or not, the sales were fantastic and people were loving that series. Me, personally, I say when you saw the War of Jokes and Riddles, that's when you knew uh, that this was going in a bad direction, but people still enjoyed it. On the lead-up to the wedding, which is going to be Batman 50, we get the, the issue where Joker murders a woman in a, in, a, um, in a church in front of Batman. He does nothing to stop it. Then he lets Joker shoot him in the head. And that was further proof that this thing was going so far off the rails it wasn't even funny. But really, it was Batman the wedding, the wedding that didn't happen, Batman 50. DC Comics literally went out and told all the comic shops, this event is happening. We encourage you to hold special midnight uh, sales of this, complete with wedding cakes and all these things. DC didn't provide any money for this. They just encouraged them to spend their own money promoting this event. And then Tom King, DC editorial, pulled the rug right out from underneath uh, not only the readers, but the retailers themselves by leaking that the the wedding wasn't going to happen two days before. And it wasn't even in a comic book publication. Was it entertaining? And not weekly? shockingly, Batman sales dipped to an all, all-time low before he was removed prematurely. Yeah, I mean... Look, when you do something like that, how in the world can any, I mean, especially the people that are directly buying your product, not, not even the consumers, just the people that are buying your product, how can they ever believe you again? I mean, Hey, we're not going to give you money. We're going to swear up and down. This thing's happening. We're going to ask that you spend money and then we aren't even going to fucking deliver on it. How do you ever trust that again? And how do you ever believe that, you know, like I understand swerves. Swerves are common in comic books. But But you don't go out there and guarantee something's going to happen. No. (laughs) So so people don't get the swerve. Like, get out of here. Exactly. You don't absolutely guarantee. You say, we shall see. It's to be determined. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, my God. Will the wedding (laughs) actually happen? Uh, You know, we don't know. Um, you know. No, that's this isn't a swerve at this point. This is just plain false lying. advertising. It's just lying. Yeah. And and when you lie, like just straight up lie to not only your primary consumer, but your end user as well in both the comic shop and the, re- the comic reader, why would they ever believe you? 
Why are they? And they ever had to make going... the damn comic book returnable, and yeah. that thing shipped a lot in orders. Yes, it did, and I guarantee it got it shipped a lot in pulped copies too. Um, for, because this is this was absurd. This would have been like I mean, you know, years ago, whenever they did the uh, the Scott Summers Jean Grey marriage, um, you know, they didn't even push it this hard, and. You know, the same with the spider marriage, the original one, um, you know, from back in the 80s. Same with uh, uh, Reed and Sue getting married. You know, even even Superman getting married. They didn't make the guarantee. There was always this chance that it might not happen or something. And they marketed it with that as well so that they left themselves open to be able to to swerve on the readers but once you're promising absolutely promising and and telling people to go out and spend money on something and then you swerve on them you're not swerving anymore you're just lying and you make you lose all credibility as a company and another byproduct of this is people that were reading the the, the series that were happy with it it made them think about it. Well, let me think about what Tom King was doing anyway. And then I start realizing, oh, his take on Batman is terrible. Yeah. Wait, what have, what have I been reading? Yeah. You know, I was excited for this. You know, they, they pulled the rug out from me. I mean, let me think about what's been going on. And you had people making videos be like, this is, you know, everything that's happened. And you're like, oh, yeah, I was reading dog shit. I yeah. didn't even realize it. They put this big spotlight on this series that was their bestseller by far and made everyone realize just how. Uh, shitty it really was yeah i mean they always say that there's no such thing as false as bad you know publicity this was absolutely bad publicity all right doc we're gonna go to marvel we're going to the x-men this all is your right. specialty i left it for number number five the last one for a reason this is interesting it isn't an, it's an x-men event you know it's an x-men thing but this thing killed a lot of runs it fucking killed i think it killed fantastic four i think it killed uh the Avengers that killed all those damn comic books. Onslaught. Motherfucker led right into Heroes Report and destroyed everything. Now, the, uh, the idea of Onslaught himself is cool, Doc. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. this weird version of Charles that, you know, gets loose and, you know, you have to, every Marvel hero has to go after him. It looks like they all die except for the X-Men at one point, Doc, but apparently, you know, Franklin and Richards Spider-Man. or whatever. Yeah. But, um... No, that's not even what happened. It just it halted everything at Marvel Comics. It did. Um, it feels like it was there. Like look, a crisis. Around, it, it was. It it, it it basically split the Earth in the superhero line. Um, you know, the X Men ended up staying on Earth, and all the rest of the heroes that were less popular than the X Men ended up shuttled off onto a counter earth um, that we didn't know at the time. Now, see, this one's always a little bit of a, uh, this one's hard for me because if you look at the state of most of those characters at the time, with the exception of fantastic four, they're all in a really miserable state that there's not very a good way to get out of Avengers is floundering uh cap is a fucking he had just been a wolf and he was dying and he looked like you know the nfl super pro um because he's dying and has to wear like an exoskeleton tony turns out evil goes bad kills the you know attacks the team gets killed and gets replaced by a teenage version of himself thor is running around in like a belly shirt and with chains attached to his um, they say nipples yeah yeah i i, I well i actually there might have been um <laughs> there the, he was wrapped up in chains he was like he was like thor spawn and he was wearing like all red and black and he had hair that came down to his like ass crack um and, and he was wearing like i mean he was literally like wearing like hot pants and a tank and like a crop top um it was so weird it was very they, they were in a, such an untenable state and there was there wasn't a good way within the current you know within 
the storytelling options available to them to reset these characters anywhere close to, you know, recognizable. Hey, um, and you're correct, because Heroes of Born was not good at that either. No, it wasn't, but it was the <laughs> best option that they had. Now, it was the best shitty option on the table? It was, and, and, and to be perfectly Instead of honest... working hard and fixing the characters? But it did... In, it did fix the sales problem. It did. Um, it wasn't. Yes, and it wasn't until until Just like it was every clear, other reboot. Well, yeah, momentarily fixes the problem. It does, and this was the first time that Marvel. I mean, this is this is actually the the big problem of this. It didn't hurt the sales at that time. It hurt the sales twenty years later when they started doing it every goddamn month every year that's when it hurt the sales this one this one's the most interesting one because it actually worked at the time it fixed the problem at the time it allowed you know some amount of reset at the time it was bondo doc it wasn't real body work bro it you're right though it wasn't and they convinced themselves Yo, know, the, the Marvel's editorial and their sales team convinced themselves that they could basically build, rebuild the entire car out of Bondo. And now we have a car that has no steel body anymore. It's just a bunch of it's it's Plato. It's, it's Play-Doh. your redneck friend. Yep. They didn't have funny, the money to fix his car. So he just Bondo the damn thing up. You're like, yep. you want me to go to Arby's and this? Yeah, Get the fuck exactly. Out of here, homie. Um, I mean, and, and then their, their argument is, well, yeah, I mean, and and the way they look at it is, well, now that it's all Bondo, it can't rust anymore. (laughs) Come on guys. Like, yeah, but it also has absolutely no structural stability. Um, so, you know, this, I knew I was going to throw you for a loop with that one. It it does. Cause I'm looking at it. I am. I am conflicted <laughs> because it worked at the time. The problem is it, it that's like that's like pull, you know, like pull lever in case of emergency, like break glass in case of absolute emergency. And it went from the entire building is on fire. There's the emergency to well, I got a hangnail and I really can't find my tweezers. So I'm going to break the glass in case of emergency. And that's where we're at now. When it comes Absolutely. to the same solution. All right, Doc, there's five moments. Most of them are comic book moments, but we do have a key uh, distribution moment where Image Comics couldn't meet up with their uh, deadlines that killed comic runs. Yeah. And I want to say thank you. I was like, I had a hiccup going there and I was trying to fight it. I want to say thank you to Doc for joining me today. That was a fun countdown. It was. Thank you for having me. This uh, This was fun. All right, later, brother. Take care, dude.